The solar only has two leads and no ground. So I'll just bend the ground out of the way. Underneath, there's a legend. Yeah, so this side is PV minus, this side is PV plus. Or in back, black to PV plus and white to PV minus. Next, I've got leads here. This is line in from the grid. So I can plug this into say an RV charge station or just a 110 outlet. Although I'd have to turn down the max current draw in this to probably about 15 amps for a normal outlet. But that's where this gets wired in. This plug here is 10 gauge, goes to a 30 amp 110 volt plug on the outside of the ball here. Just runs right through the wall, super short run. But this is, that's what I'll run into this particular input here. This second input in the back here, so there's the first one, second one, this guy is for the AC output. So when the inverter takes power from the batteries or from the solar panels, it'll output this and I can run it into my electrical panel. So I need to take 10 gauge wires from this, run down to my electrical panel. The inverter here is 30 amps ish, or 25 amps, because it's 3000 with a peak of 6000. But the cool thing with peak currents is that you can kind of ignore them. I don't know if you're supposed to, but that's what you can do. And it won't overwhelm the wire if it's just a short period of time. So 10 gauge should be good to run from here to my breakout panel. I have outputs here that are from the inverter. And so I will run those down through that port. And then I'll punch out one of these guys in the top here. And I'll try to find a nice grommet to put in it so that it won't ever rub on this metal here. And then I will run down into this lug and this lug down here. So this panel can do two phase. So if we look at it, I it bent a little bit. But here's one phase, and he goes to all the top breakers. Here's the second phase lug, and he goes to all of the bottom breakers. And so if you installed any two breakers side by side, one phase would be on the other, or one phase would be on this one, one phase would be on this one. And so if you have a two gang breaker, it'll always be two phase just because they alternate. And this guy here is neutral. I also have a grounding bar that I will use and I'll just screw it in probably down here somewhere. And then I will run the ground from my inverter down to that grounding bar and all the grounds from all my wires coming in here into that grounding bar as well. For the run from the inverter to the breaker panel, I have this wire that was just left over in the garage. You can see this has, it is made for a breaker panel such as this, or at least running from a break, breaker panel to some appliance. So this is 10 gauge and it is for three phase. So you can see we have one phase, two phase, a neutral slash, and then a ground wire. And so for AC power, when one phase is on a rise, the other phase is on a, a bottom run and I'm not sure what that's called but anyway so basically two phase positive terminals can be handled by a single neutral which is slick do I know all the correct terms no does that matter no it's not really installing the grounding bar he's not going anywhere he seems kind of close to the side but I guess it doesn't matter because it's a ground and so it's installed straight into the box anyway. So you're going to see neutral, one phase, two phase, ground. I'll wire both of my single phases to both of these two phase terminals. This isn't ideal because this doesn't have a little clampy bit in it. Like these guys here have these clamps so they can hang on to the wire. And basically the theory is that you put the clamp over the wire and then it squeezes. And so if this gets jerked, it's gonna put the stress to the box and not to the wire and the connections internally. I think I'll use this clamp here and then I just won't clamp the wires at the bottom at all because I don't have enough of those and it really probably doesn't matter. 
I'll just make sure that they're tied up nice and tight. Alright, you install these guys. You know, screw this doohickey. And then you slip them into your hole. And you take and you screw it up from the bottom like that. And I think there's an actual wrench deal that you're supposed to use on these. I don't have it, so I use pliers. There we go. That ain't going anywhere. Famous last words. I'm gonna take this wire here. I'm gonna punch it down from the top. Figure out about how much I need for that. So I'm just gonna run this directly over here to this side. But I also need to run the ground down to the bottom here to my ground bar. So I actually need a bunch and I'll just cut off everything that is extra. So now this guy can get locked down. Input. Yeah. There we go. These are all wired up. My ground's hanging out on the side. Torqued down these large four gauge wire lugs nice and tight. So now I just have to wire this box here. Tighten these guys a little more. No idea how tight these things are supposed to be. Just tight enough it doesn't wiggle, but not so tight that you cut the wire sheathing, I would imagine. Now that the sheathing is mostly off, I wonder if I could pull this red wire out. So now what I do is start untangling this mess of wires. When I ran the wires, I wrote on each one so I know what it is. So this appliances, stove, fridge, microwave. So I know where that one runs and I know what it'll hook to on the other end. This one here, mechanical room outlets. So that's the outlet up top and the one down the bottom. That's probably the handiest one. So I think I'll start with that one. So I just bend the rest of these. Try to run them in a somewhat orderly fashion. This guy here, let's see, AC air conditioning. So let's say he goes to one. And this strip him here. And I need to be real sure that I write these down as I'm doing this. Otherwise, <laughs> all my previous plan will be for nod. Alrighty. So, in theory, if I turn that on, our air conditioning would have electricity. The other end isn't wired up yet, so I'll leave them off. But that's how that works. Now I'll just repeat it. And I'll go get something to write this down with.
Next, I wired my four gauge wires for my inverter down to my battery. So here's to the 12 volt. The 14 gauge wire should carry up to 15 amps. I should only need five amps per, per uh, converter or 10 amps total. So it should be plenty large for that. Here's the four gauge wire negative terminal runs through my battery management system and then up to this fuse here and then into the battery positive terminal here is connected directly so this these wires run up up into the bottom of my inverter here and so those should be hot there's the solar input the, the 120 volt input and here's a 120 volt output to the circuit panel all the circuit breakers are off so I should be able to flip my power switch here. I should turn on. And just like that, we can see we have 53.1 volts and we are outputting zero volts. So next, I wanna test and see if my circuit breakers here are working and just do a quick sanity check. So, Probably the first thing we're going to do, number five here, is mechanical room lights. So, or not lights, mechanical room outlets. So, one, two, three, four, five. Number five is this guy. I have one outlet here, so I'm going to flip him on. Nothing changes. That's good. Got my little voltmeter here. I'm going to turn him on. He is confused. He's trying to sense voltage. Stick the leads into my outlet here. And in theory, I did this all right, we should have power. Not working. So now we start troubleshooting. <laughs> Why don't we have power? Let's see. We have no power between those two. Oh, I just discovered the problem. Okay, it's set on DC. I thought it was supposed to auto switch, but I guess it doesn't. I'll switch it to AC. Look at that, 120 volts. Isn't that beautiful? Okay. And then we should have 120 on this guy too. Yep, we do. Now if I did everything right, I should be able to check this lead into the small guy. You can tell which one's negative because it's big and the positive is small. It's AC so that you can get away with switching them sometimes. If we check these in here, check the power. 120 volts. Perfect. Just built this little breaker panel for the 12 volt circuitry in the garage. Doesn't look like much. It's just a little wooden box. It's got hinges on one side. All these holes in the front. And I can pop it and with this little latch here and open up the front. So what I'm going to do is screw that to the wall. The back will just be the wall with a bunch of wires coming through it. And then on the front, I will take a whole bunch of my little circuit breakers and plug in the holes. And then a whole bunch of switches and plug in the other holes. So basically, these circuit breakers are made to be installed by unscrewing this little round nut here, slipping them through from the back of a half inch hole like that, and then screwing the nut back down. And then, so this is a toggle switch here. And the breakers, very similar idea, these are actually just a hair smaller, but they're push button breakers and they've got this nut here that screws off of them, like that. And so when this breaker pops, you can see it says 20 on the end there, the white bit here will pop out and it'll stick out a little bit and you just push it back in to reset. So I'm going to wire a whole bunch of these in series with switches. and so. On the front of this, you just see rows of breaker, switch, top, bottom. So there'd be a row of breakers all across and then a row of switches all across these guys. And then behind, I'll wire one set of these terminals all to the same input wire. And then I'll jumper from a breaker to a switch and then run this output to an actual device.
So I finished wiring a single circuit for the lights here. Here's the input from the batteries. So I've got positive, negative, positive, negative, whatever it is. And then um, that runs up here into this breaker. This breaker runs out to my converter box here. Converter box runs out, there's a negative and then there's a positive that comes, let's see, this yellow guy here is the positive. He comes up over here to this line of wires here. And this gives positive power to each of these switches. Then this switch here is wired via this little loop to this breaker here, and this breaker runs out to all of the lights. So now I can turn on this master switch, which will give power to this entire row here, and then I can turn on this little 15 amp breaker here, and that will give power to my lights. And so now all of the lights everywhere in the tiny house have power. There aren't very many lights installed yet, but they should all have power. And so now I'll flip this switch and the light should turn on. And it works. So now all that's left is uh, a lot more little tiny loops of wire.